I love LEDs. Um, most of the lights in my arcade machines are LEDs. They're so versatile and uh, they create such so little heat. Uh, it's a great advantage in, in a closed cabinet. Um, actually, the lights in my workshop are all LEDs. Um, <coughs> And uh, I'm going to film this whole video with LED lighting. I'm doing it after dark to show them off at their best advantage. Uh, as always, I should say that uh, I'm not an expert. Uh, I'm not an expert in anything. I'm jack of all trades. Um, this video is about my experience of using them, uh, lots of them, over 40 years in my machines. If you want to skip to a particular chapter, um, here are the contents. LED uh, stands for light emitting diode. Um, they go back to about 1900. Um, the uh, first ones were in crystal radios. The cat's whisker, where the whisker, the little wire, touched the crystal, the Galena crystal. Um, that was the first uh, semiconductor junction uh, that let the electricity flow one way and not the other. And that was the first diode. Well, Marconi's assistant, Henry Round, uh, was playing around with different materials for the crystal and with silicon carbide, he actually saw a flash of light where the wire touched the crystal. Um, and this was the first observation that uh, diodes could create light. I tried it, couldn't get it to work at all. Um, and it wasn't until 1960s until visible light uh, LEDs uh, became available. This is my earliest LEDs are on this thing. Uh, this is a, one of the very first pocket calculators from 1971 and the display are just uh, tiny segments of LED. Mine came from a junk shop but knew it would have cost £200, uh, £2,000 today. It's odd to think how exotic LEDs were when I started out. But of course today LEDs are, are really cheap um, and uh, they're everywhere. The sort of school experiment that almost every kid does is to connect an LED to uh, a little coin cell. Um, one way around it doesn't work at all. Um, the other way around uh, it lights up. It doesn't harm LEDs to connect them the wrong way around. Um, I always think it's rather misleading really because <clears throat> it's a very particular combination. Um, the voltage has to be precisely right for this to work. So it only works with the lithium 3 volt uh, coin cells, not with the ordinary silver oxide 1.5 volts. And it won't work with dry batteries. Um, 1.5 ones uh, won't work at all. And if you try a big battery, um, it'll just fry the um, LED. It'll work for a fraction of a second. Um, they can't cope with uh, having too much voltage or too much current. Uh, they overheat. So in normal situations, um, you have to connect the uh, LED to a resistor. And I tend to do this right at the beginning of a project so that uh, I don't forget to do it. I'm using a, a 1K resistor here. Um, you can often get away with a bit less than that if you need it to be maximum brightness. So now I can uh, power my LED from a 12 volt power supply. If I could remember which way round they goes. Actually, the LEDs are marked uh, which way round they go. Um, yeah, there you can, now you can see it very clearly. The base has a flat and that's always on the negative side. Um, the other distinction is that the positive wire is always a bit longer than the negative wire. But I must say, I always still get confused and never remember this, so <laughs> it's not that useful to me. Okay, so of the 12 volts across the power supply, um, now 10 volts is dropped uh, across the resistor um, so there's just two volts uh, across the LED. It's perfectly safe.
Well, uh, of course, LEDs come in lots and lots of different colours. And uh, you also probably know they come in lots of different sizes too. 2mm, that's a 3mm, slightly odd one, that's a flashing one, I'll talk about them in a bit. That's a standard 5mm one, and this is a large 10mm one. Um, I very, don't usually use these large ones, they're no brighter than the small ones. So another difference is the viewing angle. Uh, these are both red LEDs. Um, this one's got a diffused fused um, casing. This is the sort of LED you would use as an indicator lamp so you could it would be visible from a wide uh, angle it would be obviously red. Uh, this one, uh, the clear one, is very bright when you're uh, in line with it. Um, the angle it's casting it shows only uh, 15 degrees um, but this I really like these ones in my machines. They make great spotlights and I can make myself into a sort of apparition. <sighs> Looking up the brightness um, is quite a confusing business. The spec is usually in the catalogues or in the data sheets. Uh, this is a bit of an old catalogue but I like my old paper catalogues. Um, the intensity is here it's measured in MCD, micro candelas, I think it means. Um, and that is the, the intensity at the brightest point of the beam. Um, but a lot of uh, LEDs are also, the brightness is measured in lumens. And this is the total amount of light that uh, comes out of the LED. So you can have two LEDs with the same amount of lumens, um, but a narrow angle one will have many more MCDs than the wide angle one if that makes sense. So it's basically, it's confusing. White LEDs are actually more recent. Uh, they're actually blue LEDs with a coating of phosphor. That's uh, the yellowy green uh, stuff you see when you look inside a white LED. Uh, the phosphor is a bit like the phosphors on fluorescent tubes. They convert the blue and ultraviolet light into visible light. So uh, these three powders are actually phosphors of the primary colours. But if I light them with ultraviolet lamp, the colours will uh, show up. And by combining different quantities of them, you can create a warm white LED or a cool white LED. Anyway, I love all these simple LEDs and I find, still find them very useful, um, like inside uh, the house of the divorced couple in my divorce machine. So besides the very basic LEDs, there are also uh, special ones. So uh, there are some that have the resistor built in, um, so uh, uh, they're for 5 volts or 12 volts. Then there are other ones with effects. Uh, this is a flashing one, uh, like you saw earlier. Uh, this one is called a rainbow LED. Um, it changes uh, colour gradually from one uh, colours the next. Uh, or if you want something more rapid, more disco-like. Um, uh, oh, I, know, I, forgot, I forgot one actually. Uh, I like these ones. The, if you're wanting to make as an emergency scene, you have to have the flashing blue and red. The great thing about these simple LEDs is that without knowing anything much about electronics you can still have a great deal of fun. Uh, I work uh, at the San Francisco uh, Exploratorium uh, with the Tinkering Studio. A few years ago we were working on a, a workshop involving shoe boxes, uh, making little scenes inside lit by LEDs. So I uh, just not did this very quickly this afternoon. Um, we've got a, a green LED there, um, there's a blue one there, and there's a colour changing one in the ping pong ball there. Uh, then there's a hole in the end uh, to look through. And now peer inside. 
The effect is surprisingly magical, and in this case, pretty spooky. At the time, uh, I got rather carried away with this project, and uh, I wrote a little story to connect uh, a few of the uh, shoebox scenes I'd made. Deep in space, an alien craft was travelling through eons of time. Then one day they found our planet Earth and landed. At first the aliens hid in a forest, but then they started to explore and found it was fun vaporising everything that moved. Ships were their favourite target. They're large and slow moving so they're easy to hit and then they disappear completely leaving no trace. The United States declared a state of emergency. While the president hesitated, the generals knew what to do. This was the moment they had trained for, a level 5 emergency. They simply pressed the button and released all the missiles. The earth shook from thousands of nuclear explosions and all the aliens were fried. A mix of radioactive fallout and alien juice rained down. This sounds bad. But actually, the radiation cured everyone's cancer and the alien juices made people glow an attractive green colour. Then the economy boomed, rebuilding all the ships and cities. Everyone got rich and lived happily ever after. Although if you're just using one LED, um, you have to connect it to a resistor, uh, it's also very common to connect uh, particularly three LEDs together uh, and in series and then to a resistor at the end of the chain. So I'll just do that. And now uh, to connect this uh, to uh, a 12 volt power supply. And uh, there they are. Um, now the reason why this is so common is because this is how uh, LED strips work. You buy these five meter reels um, of uh, strips of LEDs uh, with self-adhesive tape on the back. Uh, and you can cut them every three LEDs. You can see there are three LEDs and a resistor. And each is a sort of independent circuit. So uh, I could, uh, I can cut it at any of these points, if I cut at the first one there, uh, and now connect this now uh, that'll work just as an independent circuit um, and then uh, you can cut them but of course you can also uh, join them, uh, you can solder them, uh, sol solder them together so just as this example, um, I'll just solder back the ones that I cut. Uh, I've done, made a bit of a mess of that, uh, but uh, just for demonstration, that should then show you that uh, the entire reel will then light up. Well, I use an awful lot of these LEDs. Uh, they're the main uh, thing I use for lighting the, the cases of my machines in, insides. Uh, so I have a, a lot of these reels and I love them. Uh, I also use them for highlighting parts of the insides of the machines like uh, the sh next shelf to go to uh, when you're picking products at the Amazon warehouse. Good! You have successfully picked your first product for the order. These LEDs, uh, reels of LEDs, um, they come in lots of different colours, um, fairly obviously. Um, they also come in different spacings. The most common is 18mm spacing, so that's 300 on a 5 metre reel. Um, and then you can cut it every 2 inches or 50mm. Um, then. Uh, there's also, though, you can get sort of ones with 600 LEDs on a reel um, with 9mm spacing. Uh, these are particularly useful, I find, for signs and lettering. You can uh, light up smaller letters. 
there are also different brightnesses. You usually see a sort of prefix, a number, a sort of often two, eight, three, four, or five, six, three, four. I didn't know until I was reading up for this video, but uh, it's actually the dimensions of the individual chips. So this is uh, five, six, three, four. So it's five point six that way and three point four that way, and this one is two point eight that way and three point four that way. And it's a it's a big difference in the brightness. Uh, it's these ones, the 5000 ones, that I use for lighting up the insides of my machines generally. Um, and uh, they are very bright. I've got a reel here. Um, so they'll light up my face, <laughs> uh, light me up. Um, but also if I turn them around to face the back of the workshop, um, I think you can sort of probably start to see that they, they're quite good at uh, uh, lighting things up. The odd thing about these tapes is that the double-sided tape is often so terrible. Um, I often end up adding my own on the back. Um, this may be because I've always bought mine from China. Um, they were so much cheaper. Uh, actually, things are changing now and... Uh, there are fewer of them coming out of China. They're not bothering anymore, I think. And prices over here are going down, so it's less important. So one other variety thing about LEDs is that uh, you can also get uh, waterproof ones. And these uh, have a case in silicon, a clear silicon. Uh, Obviously, if you're going to do something outside, uh, they're brilliant. Uh, but I would say that unless you really need it um, to try and avoid them. My experience is that uh, they don't last so long. I think the LEDs get hotter uh, under uh, silicon. Um, they can't radiate the heat out so well. Uh, but also, they're a pain to cut and to join. So I'll try and uh, show you how I, I do it, um, but it's not easy. The cutting, of course, is easy, but then you've got to get the silicon off um, the, uh, the contacts. So to do that, you've got to cut through um, the silicon, but not so much that you cut through the copper as well got to go almost so once you've gone through uh, you then got to kind of sort of just to try and prise the silicon off the end and hope that it comes cleanly yeah I think it did in that case that wasn't too bad so then you do the other side uh, I think it works a bit better not to be too cautious about uh, cutting. Um, it's much easier if you almost go through the silicon. No, you see that one didn't work so so well. Ah, that's better. That's probably all right now. Yeah, I have managed to um, bear uh, the contacts. So if you're doing a complicated shape, uh, it's really best to avoid them. Well, uh, the potential is sort of endless with these uh, um, LEDs. Uh, one of my favourite uses of them is in my nuke. Um, the case of this machine is made of polypropylene that's translucent. And so the inside of the machine is just full of uh, LED strips. And these are connected to uh, a microcontroller uh, to actually change the, gradually change the brightness. Uh, to give it that sort of radioactive glow.
Before leaving, please collect your nuclear waste. Uh, besides the ordinary LEDs, of course, there are now these very, very tiny ones, uh, surface mount ones. Um, they're normally just soldered to uh, a circuit board. <laughs> they're just so unbelievably tiny. You can just about solder to them yourself. There's a T on here. Uh, and I think the bar of the T is the positive. Thing. We'll find out anyway. And I find a relatively easy way to do it is to use um, self-adhesive uh, copper tape. And if you put a couple of strips of the copper tape uh, down, they're conductive pads on the sides of the surface mount LEDs. And uh, with any luck, we'll get it to I find that the most common mistake is not to put enough heat into the joint. Uh, they're quite tough, these things, um, and they do have heat sinks. See, they need a bit of heat to uh, get the solder to flow. Uh, so now we can see if it works. Uh, yeah, first time. And they're beautiful because they are so uh, amazingly tiny. And again, of course, they come in all different colours and brightnesses. Uh, the spec on these is quite confusing. Um, so you do need to check uh, the current and the rest of it. Another thing, you sometimes need to lower the brightness of uh, LEDs. Um, and uh, the most obvious way of going about that would be to just to do it with a, a larger resistor. And so here I've got a variable resistor connected to an LED. If I increase the resistance by turning the knob, uh, you can see it's getting less bright. And then the same going back the other way, obviously. But actually, it's now uh, more common to change the brightness of LEDs, not by uh, increasing the resistance but by turning them on and off very very rapidly too fast for the eye to see so the proportion of the time that they're on uh, is the brightness of the LED well for this you need the LED to be connected to a microcontroller like an Arduino um, but of course in lots of situations they are like in this very beautiful light box uh, made by my sister the transitions are actually very graceful and smooth, but the video camera picks up the rapid switching of the LEDs, which results in this flickering effect. So uh, a video about LEDs wouldn't be complete without mentioning these clever ones. These are addressable LEDs. Uh, they have a chip in them. Um, they're RGB, they're the three primary colours. And the chip enables the brightness and timing of every LED in the chain to be uh, controlled by a single wire. Uh, of course, they need to be connected to uh, a microcontroller. Uh, so in this case, I've got uh, mine connected to uh, a little Arduino um, and once you've got the program in uh, you can just connect it to a power supply um, but so that I can show a variety of programs I'm going to power it up from my laptop um, and so that's the program that's uh, in it at the moment uh, it's very easy to uh, change uh, the program um, uh, I have to admit I haven't used them uh, on any of my machines yet, um, though I think I probably will. Uh, 
I have a slight disadvantage. I find uh, object-oriented programming languages like uh, C++ used for the Arduino, I don't find them intuitive. So uh, I can just sort of clunkily copy and paste and change little bits. Uh, but it doesn't somehow come naturally. I'll try one more. It's particularly when there's a fault. Uh, I don't often don't really understand quite why. Uh, if I was younger, I would certainly take the trouble to learn it properly. Most lights in the home uh, are now LEDs. Uh, the compact fluorescent lights um, were very ingenious things, uh, but they were always rather too complicated for their own good. Never lasted that long uh, and <laughs> were a bit polluting with mercury in. Um, they've rather gone replaced by LEDs and there's a great variety of different types. Uh, this is one is one of my favourites, it's quite an early one. Um, if you look down into the base there is a ring of tiny little LEDs and this nice acrylic flower shape is uh, an optical way of spreading out the light out the top uh, and it works really well, it's, uh, <laughs> it's very clever and ingenious. It's uh, amazing now you can get one that's really exactly like a traditional light bulb um, and these cast uh, a nice sort of warm light again very like a traditional light bulb. Um, I was puzzled by these I don't quite understand how they work so uh, I, I took one to bits. I got the individual things to flash and then blow up but not to stay alight for any time. Well, white LEDs have progressed very rapidly. There's such a huge market for them. Um, it's only a few years ago uh, I bought uh, some floodlights like this for my workshop. Um, it was just an array of ordinary 5mm white LEDs. Uh, the ones you get now uh, are just a single um, slab of coloured phosphors with uh, surface mount LEDs. Uh, underneath and the light uh, it gives out is really quite different so if I shine that one at the back wall um, I brought that one out uh, it's a bit confusing this because um, this is a warm white LED and that one's a cool white LED but this is really very wide angle almost 180 degrees uh, unlike this one uh, which is really almost more of a spotlight. Um, I, I'm sad you can't get these anymore because they're actually better for lighting up the tools in my workshop. Then there are other sorts of uh, LEDs. Uh, this one's more for office lighting. Uh, these, are, these panels are designed to go in um, suspended ceilings really. Um, they're 600 mil square uh, but uh, I like their sort of even light uh, it doesn't cast so many shadows um, I've actually been using it a bit for lighting this video then you can buy uh, LED tubes as a replacement for fluorescent tubes um, these aren't quite so straightforward you can't just swap the tubes over um, you have to uh, remove the ballast and uh, the starter um, which isn't uh, a great huge job and the instructions are usually on the tube. Basically you just want uh, a live in one end and a neutral in the other. So uh, that's finished the wiring. Uh, the wires come in here. Uh, the live wire uh, now comes through this connector uh, and into this end of the tube. Uh, the other connection to this end of the tube is capped off. Uh, at this end, uh, the neutral wire from the mains in uh, goes to the um, connector, the tube connector, and again uh, the other connection is, is capped off. So uh, that should be ready to um, power up. And there we are. The LED tubes don't 
save much energy compared to a fluorescent tube and they don't give out a lot more light but um, the light is a bit more directional uh, you can see there's a, um, a strip on the tube uh, and that is uh, where the LEDs are mounted so the light sort of shines outwards in a fan if you like so you don't waste light shining backwards like in a, a fluorescent tube but of course if you're starting from scratch if you haven't already got a fluorescent fitting um, it's even simpler you can get these uh, very nice slimline ones now um, that are very cheap and uh, um, very quick and easy to fit so I also use quite a lot of these in the machines then of course there's a wide variety of uh, spotlights they look very different from each other but in my experience is that they're all pretty much the same they're nearly all about five watts uh, and have a pretty similar beam angle around uh, 30 degrees um, mostly for mains with this GU10 fitting um, but you can still get uh, 12 volt ones um, with the uh, older fitting. There is uh, some variety in beam angle um, which is which? That one's 40 degrees and that one's 25 degrees. Uh, you, they're, not, they're not profoundly different um, but maybe you can see that's the 25 degree one and that's the uh, 40 degree one. Um, but uh, special ones are made that are only 10 degrees. Um, these are a lot more expensive, they're about 20 quid each. Um, but they're wonderful things. Um, this uh, is a really sort of focused spot, uh, like a car headlight or even more uh, narrow beam. Um, it's 8 watts as well, so it's incredibly bright uh, and it's well worth it for particular uses. So in iZombie, um, it has what's called a Pepper's Ghost effect with a semi-silvered mirror. Um, so the zombies are actually reflected in the mirror, um, but the man uh, who's fighting them off, he's straight ahead. Uh, and to light the man, I've used one of these lights. Um, the man has to be very brightly lit for this effect to work, uh, but not to light any of his surroundings. Household uh, spotlights are really quite bulky things uh, for the scale of my machines so I often end up using uh, so-called power LEDs um, they just take a much higher current than normal uh, that's a small one um, you can get ones that are very similar from the LEDs inside the floodlights they take odd voltages in current so the simplest ones to use I find are, uh, are ones like this uh, which are designed to go straight into a 12 volt power supply um, and these things like this they've been around a while now so they're quite uh, they're not going to disappear and they're very bright um, this is about eight and a half watts I mean if I shine it on the wall it wouldn't be as bright as uh, one of those spotlights because the it's a very wide angle I often though want a spotlight rather than that wide angle um, I find these tricky because they need a heat sink but uh, fortunately you can buy them with a small heat sink um, a star shaped heat sink they used to be called lumi leds but uh, they're quite generic now I like these things but they aren't entirely straightforward uh, they're rated at uh, the LEDs themselves are rated at uh, 3.3 to 4 volts at uh, 800 milliamps um, so you can either drive them with uh, a constant current power supply um, I, I don't get on with them very well uh, I prefer constant voltage um, but then you have to put the right resistor in um, to get the right current going through the LED uh, which is it's a useful thing to be able to do so I'll now show you how I go about it 
So for an LED that's uh, rated at uh, 3 to 4 volts uh, and 0.8 of an amp um, and you want to run it off a power supply that's uh, 12 volts. So uh, if you, the simple way is to ignore the resistance of the LED uh, and think what resistor would you put in the circuit um, to give you a current of 0.8 amps. So by Ohm's law, volts over amps equals R. Um, then you have your 12 volts on top and your 0.8 underneath and that gives you a resistance of 15 ohms. So if you put a, a 15 ohm resistor in the circuit, uh, the current is never going to exceed 800 milliamps, or 0.8 of an amp. Um, the resistance of the LED will only add to the resistance of the circuit and lower the current. So this is a rough way of doing it, uh, but if you want to get the maximum brightness out of your LED, uh, the, the other way is to do an experiment. I use a bench top power supply uh, and I also use a variable resistor. This is a big old one um, that can cope with the quite high currents. Um, you can use an ordinary one if you don't keep it on for long. <laughs> so uh, the first thing you do is to set the voltage to uh, the, the voltage of your power supply, um, in my case 12 volts. Um, then uh, a lot of these benchtop power supplies uh, you can set the current as well which is very useful so um, to do that uh, you short the two terminals and then turn the display over to the current which is two amps at the moment and now I wind down the current uh, where am I going now the LED is rated at uh, um, 800 milliamps but um, I always play safe, so go, uh, I don't know, a bit over 700 <laughs> should be safe. Now we can't kill the LED because it's going to be limited by the power supply to uh, 720 milliamps. So uh, first of all you have to check that the resistance is set at its maximum resistance of 175 ohms. Um, then uh, we're all ready to uh, connect up the uh, LED. So there's a certain amount of light from it even with the high resistance and obviously if I lower the resistance um, it'll it'll get brighter. Now at some point and uh, there we go and now it's at, with no resistance it's being limited by the current on the uh, benchtop power supply. So what I want to find is the point on the resistor where it changes from limiting the current. You can just see this light here um, and that is that shows when the current limiting comes on. So it's about there. So now that's the test done um, so I just need my meter uh, and I'll set that to ohms and now I just need to see what the value of the resistance was that uh, I ended up with. 14.9 ohms. So because I've been cautious about limiting the current to 720 milliamps rather than it's rated 800, I ended up with the same value resistor as my sum in this case. But I have to say I do prefer doing this than the sum. It's more real and less theoretical. The final resistor has to be a power resistor to dissipate the heat. And the power of resistors is measured in watts, which uh, is amps times volts. So for 800 milliamps and 12 volts, uh, that's about 10 watt. Well, I like these LEDs. Um, particularly, you can buy uh, little lenses. They're various different styles. They all do roughly the same thing. They convert it into a little spotlight um, with a beam angle of about uh, 30 degrees. Rather like the uh, household spotlights, but of course just so much smaller. Um, uh, they're perfect for fitting inside uh, the machines. Well, I think that just about brings me to the end of the variety of 
LEDs that I use in my machines. Uh, I hope you've found something useful in this video. Uh, I think I'm going to leave you with a machine I made a couple of years ago um, that has a particularly large number of LEDs in, inside it. So uh, these are a couple of scenes from it. Hello, I'm Kevin and I'm Nigel. We're going to tell you all about the humans, those large flightless mammals. First thing to know about them is to have sympathy for the poor things. They're just so desperate to fly, they squash themselves into cramped metal tubes. And this after lengthy and humiliating preparation rituals in the terminal buildings. They're hurting like cattle. Disgraceful, really. But the brightest plumage of all belongs to this lot, the workers. Such a lovely yellow. In the past, all humans used tools and built things, but today they can't even make their own nests, so this lot has to do all the work for them. Now, humans have distinctive mating habits. These seem to involve loud music and flashing lights. They emerge from these strange places late at night all paired up. They then rush home to the nest as fast as they can and finally they mate. 